We have just had uh, Market Access Day here in Gothenburg, Sweden, focusing on trade barriers and free trade agreements. My name is Jesper Örn. I'm responsible for uh, international trade and uh, business development here at West Sweden Chamber of Commerce. And uh, with me, I have Mr. Denny Redoné, uh, Deputy Director General, Chief Trade Enforcement Officer at the EU Commission. Uh, Denny, after this day, it's been a few hours, uh, what's your key? takeaways from the day? Well, it's been a great few hours. We're very happy to be here uh, in West Sweden to meet uh, companies, economic operators that are uh, directly engaged in international trade. Um, I think it's very important for us in the European Commission if we're going to support these interests uh, in the different member states of the European Union, that we have direct contact, we really touch the fabric of the economic structure of the country or the region here, that we understand what are the concrete barriers that are faced in third country markets, what are the successes for lifting those barriers, what have been the difficulties in actually not being able to lift some of these barriers and market access obstacles, and understand how we need to work with the national governments and national authorities, as well as the economic operators themselves, to do a more efficient job in us, public authorities at the EU level, conducting the common commercial policy of the EU in support of these, uh, of these economic interests. And you have had those days in, in other markets, countries in, in Europe. You will have them in, in more countries. But why are those days, like the market access day, so, so important? Uh, because it enables us uh, in, in, in geographically determined areas to really understand what are the needs. What are the priorities? What are the priority markets? What are the priority sectors? And therefore adapt our support to these priority markets and priority sectors, which are not the same across Europe, obviously. Now here, it was a great opportunity to interact with very competitive export-oriented firms in critical sectors of the European economy, where there's machinery, electrical machinery, automotive sector, telecoms, and, I, you know, and, and many others, uh, very much at the higher end of tech, therefore facing very complex barriers in third countries, sometimes of a complicated regulatory nature, and that enables us to adapt our support, both in terms of the information we're able to provide for companies that are seeking to internationalize, and the support that we can give to solve problems when these companies are trying to operate in these third country markets. And here with me I have Getinge and uh, Ms. Niklasson. You discussed in the panel various things, but w what would you say, what are your key takeaways? Well, I would say just being here, sharing experience, sharing information with many of the other companies, with public bodies, with the, uh, uh, with the European Commission. It's extremely important for us uh, to benchmark the, the problems and challenges we see on global markets, uh, but also addressing them in terms of finding solutions uh, with, the, with the implementers uh, as the Commission. Would you see that we could have an efficient dialogue between the industry and company like Getinge and the EU Commission? Well, on many different levels, I think the Swedish government has provided a number of opportunities in, in, in trade groups, high level roundtables, those kinds of opportunities where we as companies can come in and, and sort of speak speak about the issues that, that we are facing and speak about the reality, speak about the success stories as we heard today as well, which is also very important. It doesn't always need to be challenges. It could also be learning from other companies having done something really well. Um, but I think for, the, for, for you as an, uh, as an association for, for the Swedish government, uh, there is a coordination function here um, and a constant dialogue with the private industry um, that needs to be put in place, um, I think, in a, in a more sustainable way. So good opportunities ahead for, for enhancing that dialogue. So now we will continue with another company participating, uh, who has participated in the panel. Actually the biggest company in, in Sweden, uh, but based here, of course, in, in West Sweden, Gothenburg. Uh, together with me I have Miss uh, Susanne Jannesson at uh, Volvo Group. Um, Susanne, after this day, uh, what's your key takeaways? 
I think it has been a great day. And it has been so valuable to listen and to interact with both the EU Commission and other industries. And uh, following up on that, uh, days like these, I mean, this is one day, but w why are they important for a big company like Volvo, even? Well, uh, considering the geopolitical situation, and in addition, the decarbonisation that we're working hard with, the collaboration and interaction between the EU Commission and industries such as us is more important than ever. We see more and more uh, localization and regionalization, which does not affect or help the, the trade in a good and efficient way. So we really need to have this collaboration to secure that we can drive and push the trade uh, towards free trade agreements, towards uh, level playing field uh, and in a good and efficient way.